My name is Leslie Seeley, and I thank you for taking an interest in my capstone project report. The topic of this presentation is Black Oak Amphitheater. This is a marketing and advertising strategy for Black Oak Amphitheater in Lindy, Missouri. During this presentation, you may follow the slideshow, which highlights pertinent information within the report. To begin, I want to note that John Ching, Director, Director of Operations for Black Oak Amphitheater, is the stakeholder for this project. Because the project is directed to Mr. Ching, I will only briefly cover background information. Black Oak Amphitheater is located in scenic Branson, Missouri, and was built in the 1980s and operated under the name Swiss Villa Amphitheater. During these years, the venue featured many concerts with big-name artists. I was not able to contact former owners of Swiss Villa to find out information about how they operated under that ownership. After putting on its last show in 1997, the venue said abandoned until purchased in 2009 by the current owner, Garland Pierce. Mr. Pierce changed the name to Black Oak Amphitheater, it has invested over a million dollars bringing the facility up to date, aesthetically and technologically. Mr. Pierce closed the venue after four years in operating seasons. It was closed in the fall of 2013 and remains closed today and is up for sale for $3.7 million. The purpose of the capstone project was to complete a needs assessment. Within this needs assessment, my goal was to identify problems with the last used marketing and advertising plan by Black Oak Amphitheater. Then, after identifying the problem, I would find a problem area and potential solution, present this to stakeholder John Ching, and hopefully bring the issues to the attention of the current owner. As well, I believe any future owner might be interested in looking at the research results and the suggestions made available within this project. The problem with the last used marketing and advertising strategy at Black Oak Amphitheater became evident early on in my report. The venue booked only four concerts in its last operating season. So the main problem identified was the inability of Black Oak Amphitheater to book big name concerts and fill venue seats, therefore making it able to make a profit. Before examining the research, I want to take a look at the research methods used for this project. To begin with, I conducted a phone interview with stakeholder John Ching. At this time, I'll take a minute to thank Mr. Ching again for his participation in this project and the important insight he offered into this research. He has been the only real link to offer information about the operations or issues of Black Oak itself. Thank you, Mr. Ching. Secondly, I chose to target survey 10 successful theaters across the United States. I wanted to look for consistency within the marketing and advertising strategies within these um, other venues, hoping that it could bring some insight to what Black Oak Amphitheater could do in the future that might make them a successful venue as well. I chose these 10 specific venues by reading an article in Rolling Stone magazine. Um, it was titled, The 10 Best Amphitheaters in the United States. After some issues with research with the initial 10 amphitheaters, I ended up expanding my research to include a total of 50 venues. As well, I was advised by Doug Warwick, the manager of the Greek Theater in Berkeley, California, to try interviewing major concert promoters like Live Nation and AEG. Doug Warwick offered a sample budget of how the Greek theater spends its money on marketing and advertising. This venue spends $1.2 million a year on marketing to promote, promote 25 concerts. He divided this budget into these areas, social media 50%, radio 25%, print ads 20%, um, and other media and arrangements for 5%. This would be about the same that Black Oak Amphitheater would have to spend up front um, in order to run their first successful operating season. But this would 
book 25 concerts. Continuing with analysis and findings, this is where the project really began to come together in terms of gaining relevant information. Um, this information is valuable for the stakeholder or for current or future owners. Through research, I began to see a pattern with the initial 10 venues surveyed. I eliminated two venues from the analysis because I determined these venues held primarily um, events focused primarily on the fine arts mm. and that the difference between them and Black Oak Amphitheater was too great for them to be considered in the analysis as similar enough to offer vital information. So this left me with eight, um, eight venues that I felt were relevant to help in this analysis of this marketing strategy. So these remaining eight venues you will see here from the slideshow. Uh, four are owned by Live Nation, which as we discussed earlier is a major concert promoter. Uh, Live Nation is a multi-billion dollar concert promotion entertainment group. Um, I came to find out it owns many, many, many concert uh, venues across the United States. Um, two of the eight venues are owned by AEG, the second largest concert promoter in the nation. One of the eight venues is owned by IMP, another major concert promoter. So this brought me to the conclusion that of the eight relevant uh, venues in the initial survey, seven are affiliated with an outside marketing company and concert promoter. As I said before, I went on to research an additional 40 venues. Of these other 40 venues researched, 38 are affiliated with a major concert promoter for all of their marketing and advertising purposes. Um, that's a significant uh, turnout in the analysis. Okay, the benefits of affiliation with a major concert promoter. My research determined that there are real benefits to Black Oak Amphitheater in contracting with a major concert promoter. In interviews with Live Nation and AEG, uh, promoters said that the venue is guaranteed sponsorship by big name brands and will receive concession items at below market rates. This is important because during research, both John Ching and Doug Ward with the Greek Theater offered that a large percentage of uh, a venue's bottom line and what contributes to the success of a venue comes down to concession revenue. So getting um, Products at below market cost, what they could as an independent and aside from a concert promoter, uh, will take away from that bottom line. Another key point to contracting with a concert promoter is to guarantee bookings. At these main three concert promoters in the U.S., uh, these are multi-billion and multi-million dollar businesses. They are in the business of booking big name artists. Um, they have control of this market, and if a venue tries to book shows independently through a talent agency, they will simply find it's impossible. I think Mr. Chin can speak to this, as it's one of the issues we covered in our interview survey. Thus, the difference between Black Oak Amphitheater booking only four shows in average per season, and other theaters like the Greek Theater that we survey, uh, booking an average of 20.6, uh, shows per season is being affiliated with a major concert promoter. Another advantage to affiliation with a major concert promoter um, is that they will handle all concert promotion, including the advertising and marketing. They also handle all ticket sales. My recommendations to the current or future owner of Black Oak Amphitheater is to hire a major concert promoter like Live Nation, AEG, or IMP. A contract with one of these concert promoters will increase bookings if BOA booked 20 shows per year. It could increase its gross profits by over $8 million per operating season. By spending the $1.2 million um, up front for the contract cost of a concert promoter, the venue could eliminate a need for in-house marketing department and rely on the concert promoter for all of its marketing and advertising needs, as well as drastically increase its revenue. Um, this is the slide that shows the drastic increase of over $8 million by using a major concert promoter. 
I'd like to thank everybody for being here today, um, and I want to thank John Ching again for participating in this as my stakeholder.